Hello and welcome back to EFD, a third of the way through the season, so we're looking at 10 clubs who are suffering from nightmare runs of form. 10. Wolves When Wolves earned automatic promotion to the Premier League after leading the Championship comfortably from October to May, they were tipped for success. They started life in the Prem exceptionally well, with fans even tipping them for European football. However, three months later, Nuno Santos' side have endured six matches of misery, with five losses and a draw. In the last six, Wolves have scored just four goals, with two of them penalties. Ignore those and they are four and a half behind their XG tally. The fixture list is looking bleak for Nuno. Clashes against Chelsea, Liverpool and Tottenham all coming in December. His squad is looking stretched, with no team in the league having used fewer than their 17 players this season, and their regular starters have been in disappointing form. Raul Jimenez has just three goals, while Diogo Jota, who scored 17 last season, has played 850 minutes without a goal, and Helder Costa, who has racked up double figures in goal contributions every season since joining Wolves, has none in 14 games this campaign. Their team certainly has quality to sit comfortably mid-table, as their defence is strong with 0.8 expected goals against per 90, better than everyone in the Prem bar Liverpool and Manchester City. If they opt to strengthen in January and keep hold of Ruben Neves, their strength in defence should allow them to push through their poor form and see Wolves back to their normal selves in the new year. 9. Bayern Munich Nine points behind Borussia Dortmund at the top of the table and in an unfamiliar fourth place, it's clear that Bayern Munich haven't enjoyed a brilliant start to the 2018-19 campaign under Niko Kovac. With 24 points from a possible 52, the Croatians' opening season in Bavaria hasn't gone to plan and it's been difficult for the 28-time Bundesliga champions to stomach. Bayern had not gone four Bundesliga matches without a home win for 24 years but broke that record in September, having lost three and drawn one. On the 1st of December, Bayern recorded their first win in a month and their third in nine league games as Serge Gnabry scored two to beat Werder Bremen away from home. But it's not enough to appease the Allianz regulars, as they're still the furthest they've been behind their rivals since 2010 when Dortmund claimed the title. Alex Ferguson famously stated that a team should never be allowed to grow altogether, but that is exactly what's happened in Munich. Robin and Ribery have dominated the Allianz for a decade, but with a combined age of 69, they can't be expected to go on forever. While Lewandowski is about to turn 30 and looking off the pace with seven goals this term, half his tally this time last season, Bayern need to plan for the future. So perhaps Kovac should take some inspiration from Lucien Favre and put faith in the younger stars in their ranks. 8. Real Madrid Another European super club in perilous form are Real Madrid, who are still struggling to come to terms with the loss of Zinedine Zidane and Cristiano Ronaldo in the summer. And let's face it, the signs were there early on. Zidane's replacement Lopetegui arrived in controversial circumstances, going behind the Spanish Football Federation's back to take the job, resulting in him being sacked from the national setup just days before the start of the World Cup. And things didn't get much better for the former Porto coach. He lost to Atleti in the European Super Cup in his first competitive game in charge and will go on to oversee defeats to the likes of CSK Moscow and Levente, as well as a 5-1 humiliation in the El Clasico, which sealed his fate at the Bernabeu. Form has improved since Lopetegui's second, and despite losing five games, they are still only five points off the top of La Liga. But if they carry on like they have for the rest of the season, Los Blancos will record just 62 points, the lowest tally since 2000, when they finished fifth. Maybe that's just what happens when you don't bother to find a proper replacement for your all-time top scorer. 7. Fulham Savisa Jokanovic's Fulham side impressed in the second flight playing attractive, possession-based football. However, no longer the big fish in a small pond, they failed to adapt their style to the Premier League, sitting rock bottom with just 8 points from 14 games and the promotion winning manager was handing his P45. Replaced with Claudio Ranieri, the cottagers are hoping the Italian works his magic and keeps them up in the top flight. Their £100 million spend in the summer isn't proving exactly profitable. So far this season, the team that consists of newcomers jean michel Seri, World Cup winner Andre Scherler and Alexander Mitrovic has only created 17 chances in 14 matches. But as the only side in England's top four tiers yet to keep a clean sheet this term and only claiming one point away from home this season from a possible 24, it looks like a huge chance for the Premier League winner. After 14 games, Fulham have conceded a huge 35 goals, the most they have ever let in after just 14 games since 1959. However, with a win against Southampton and a spirited performance against their West London rivals, things are looking a bit better under the smiley Italian. 6. Barcelona Barcelona are somehow holding the top spot with just 28 points from 14 matches. Put the tally in the Premier League and Barcelona would be sitting in 6th. After 10 games, Barca were 7 points worse off than they were last term, 
studying the statistics and it gets a little complicated. While they've scored fewer goals, Barcelona are actually shooting more, with 17.9 shots per 90 compared to 15.4 last season, so it seems like the quality of the shots must be lower. Not even Christmas and Valverde's side have already matched the total conceded last term, but weirdly, they're actually conceded fewer shots at 8.7 compared to 11.7. But the chances that they are given away are more dangerous and Barcelona's defence is relying heavily on Testergen, who is making 2.6 saves per 90 and it's making us question Valverde's playing style with an ageing squad. According to Statsbomb's press counter, holding midfielder Sergio Busquets is the only player making over 20 presses a game, with Usman Dembele coming second with an average of 17. Suarez and Messi are making only 12 and 9 respectively per 90 minutes. Transfer rumours and gossipy headlines have unsettled Marco and Dembele, players that they should be keeping hold of to help placate their ageing squad. But whilst Real Madrid are having an even bigger nightmare, Barca's poor form could probably slip under the radar and Silverware will still be heading to Catalonia. 5. Tottenham It might be slightly hard to consider their 2018-19 campaign a nightmare, but give us a minute because their underlying stats show that there are some concerns for the North London club. Masked by some impressive performances in the league and in Europe, there's actually been a slip in Spurs form since the end of last season. It seems that Mauricio Pochettino is being punished for not adding class to his midfield in the summer. He is relying on Moussa Dembele, who at 31 is looking off the pace, making just 0.9 dribbles per 90 minutes compared to 2.4 last term. Eric Dyer is still problematic and while Harry Winks does look promising, it's a huge job for the youngster. Further up the pitch, and Harry Kane hasn't been on his normal fire form, from 14 games, his 8 goals seem reasonable, but it's inflated by 3 penalties and still behind Aubameyang, Sterling and Aguero. This time last term, he was producing 5 shots per 90. This season, his attempts have slipped to 3.4 a game. Maybe he's still suffering from his injured ankle, or it's potentially down to a switch in the style of play that has allowed Ali, Son, Kane and Eriksen all in the same starting lineup, giving the number 10 fewer chances. As long as Harry puts his shooting boots back on soon, it isn't going to be a disastrous 2019 for the Spurs faithful. While they aren't quite up there with Chelsea or Liverpool and away off City, they do remain better than Arsenal and Manchester United and fourth spot is theirs to lose this season. 4. Ipswich Ipswich fans were delighted to see the back of Mick McCarthy when he left the club in the summer following six seasons in charge. Fast forward six months however, and the mid-table mediocrity that the new island manager provided seems a distant memory. His replacement, Shrewsbury boss Paul Hurst, has already come and gone at Portman Road, unsurprising considering he managed a single victory in his 15-game stint in charge. Part of the problem is that none of their strikers take more than one shot a game, making the sale of last season's top scorer and fan favourite Martin Waghorn look a dreadful decision. The Tractor Boys now average just 9.5 shots per game and just 2.5 on target, the worst in the championship. Perhaps the only bright sparks are midfielders Grant Ward and Gwion Edwards. Edwards leads the club scoring charts with 4 to his name and completes 1.7 dribbles per 90, the 5th highest in the championship. Ward meanwhile is taking 1.1 shots and makes 1.3 key passes each game. Forgotten Champions League winner Paul Lambert has since taken the reins at Portman Road but is winless in his first five, leaving Ipswich bottom at seven points from safety. Sure there's a long way to go yet, but it doesn't make the task any easier for the Suffolk club. 3. Monaco Thierry Henry's managerial career started well as Roberto Martinez's assistant coach for the Belgium national side, who he helped guide to the World Cup semi-final. But with zero experience as head coach, Monaco raised some eyebrows when they appointed the ex-Arsenal forward as manager in 2018 after dismissing Leonardo Jardim. Henri said that he would look to draw upon his experiences under Pep Guardiola and Arsene Wenger, but right now there aren't many similarities. 19th in the French top flight with 10 points in 15 games and the Principality have gone from winning the title in 2016-17 to fighting relegation in 2018. Monaco's win against Cayenne on the 24th of November was the club's first victory since August, but it failed to create momentum as their following clash against Montpellier ended in a 2-1 defeat despite Henri's squad going ahead for 80 minutes. So far this season, half of the club's goals have come from Falcao and four of their 14 total have been scored by 21-year-old Yuri Tillemans. But averaging only 50% of possession and 11 shots per game, they're a shadow of their league and winning campaign two years ago. After selling Kylian Mbappe to their most fiercest competitor, underperforming in the transfer window and relying on a 32-year-old Falcao as top goal scorer, maybe more questions need to be answered in the red and white boardroom. 2. Manchester United Arguably the most alarming case in the Premier League this season is Manchester United, who after recording their best top flight finish after the post-Fergie era in 2017-18, 
are currently recalling the days of David Moyes. While they are currently sitting in 7th, they were ninth at this stage in the 2013-14 season. Mourinho's men have just 22 points, which is even worse than the 23 they mustered after Moyes' first 14 games. They have conceded more goals than Newcastle, Crystal Palace and Brighton. In short, United are in a crisis, despite talk of the Portuguese manager's potential sacking having gone almost silent. But while the team's style of play and defensive confidence have both clearly diminished since Mourinho's first season in charge, two aspects that can be blamed on the coach, there are a number of individuals within the squad who are having a nightmare of seasons too. Lukaku has scored just once in eight games and has taken an entire shot less per game in all comps, while Matic's tackle and interception numbers make for similar reading. Furthermore, Fred, the club's only significant recruitment in the summer, has started just three league games since August. And with a clear rift between board and manager, it's now a case of when and not if the Mourinho show will come to a calamitous end at Old Trafford. 1. Athletic Bilbao One of three clubs have never been relegated from La Liga, Bilbao have been a shining light for sustainability in an age when the wealth gap between Barca and Real and the rest of Spain has become even bigger. Their localised recruitment policy has unearthed some of Basque country's finest talents with the club making €145 million Euros from the sales of Emmerich Laporte and Kepa in 2018. However, the loss of these key personnel and poor managerial appointment has left the club facing demotion to the Segunda division for the first time in its history and the signs were already there. After selling Laporte to Man City in January, they lost 9 of their remaining 16 Liga games, having been unbeaten in 10 before his departure. And after Kepa's departure, the side has kept just one clean sheet and haven't won since the opening day of the season. But perhaps what is most alarming is the form of Aritza Duriz, who has been the club's top scorer in all competitions for the past six seasons. He is still yet to register a goal in the league, and considering he turns 38 in February, while Athletic Club haven't moved for an adequate replacement is beyond us. Head coach Eduardo Barrizzo has now been shown the door after just eight months in charge, with guy Scott Garitano being promoted from the youth setup to take his place. Some will be confident that the club can turn it around. However, last season's 16th place finish was their worst in over 10 years, and with their defensive foundation now depleted, we wouldn't be surprised if their historic run finally came to an end next summer. So that was 10 teams that are in nightmare form. If we've missed anyone out or you have any suggestions, comment below. And as always, check out our other shows, Football Monday Out, FDFC with Sevens, Bucket List and Personal Mastermind. And as always, like and subscribe.